listen, I, you've got fake and bake providers in Europe who are playing that game, mostly because they don't really have a lot of experience with using bone marrow, so they're more comfortable with PRP. Uh, the additional risk of the PICL approach from the front, uh, we're not going to do anything but put our best foot forward. Prolotherapy would be dangerous in that space because prolotherapy is a neurolytic and you could theoretically inject around the dura or the covering of the spinal cord. So prolotherapy would be a non-starter, something that would be a, be a really bad idea to use for a PICL. And then PRP is gonna underperform bone marrow based on our experience and what we've already published in uh, treatment of ligaments. So no, I don't foresee us doing that. Listen, I, you've got fake and bake providers in Europe who are playing that game mostly because they don't really have a lot of experience with using bone marrow, so they're more comfortable with PRP. But to me, it's a dangerous thing to do. Um, the whole fake and bake PICL is a dangerous thing to do. But if you're using a little bedside kit to make PRP, man, that's a lot of risk for the patient, right? You're, you're having some MA, um, screw something on, who knows if that's a sterile process, put it in this thing, run it, manipulate it, take it out hand it to the doctor. Again, all of our processing done is, or processing at our clinic is done in a CGNP clean room. Now, that's a million dollar facility versus 20 or 30 grand for a cheap little PRP kit. Um, so, you know, I, I'm willing to spend that money if it adds, um, if it adds safety at the margins. Um, I don't think I'd ever use a kit-based system, um, for example, to inject these ligaments uh, through a PICL because of the additional risk that would add.